Hello, beautiful souls. Victoria Mador here. I am the founder of Healing Tribe, and I also created the Dream Regression Technique. It's an advanced technique where we really have to learn a lot of basic foundation and intermediate foundational um, protocols in order for us to do a proper dream regression technique, whether it is dreams, nightmares, psychedelics, sacred plant medicine, and trans regression. So the program uh, includes age regression, which includes a lot of inner child and womb regression healing protocols, as well as past life, other lives, regression to other realms and dimensions within the dream state, depending on what's going on in the dream. And really, at the end of the day, the goal is to help your clients or yourself, if you're taking this for self-development, to understand what's happening. Why is it happening? What developmental traumas may be affecting you based on what's happening in the dream or affected your spirit, your soul in other realities, dimensions, past lives, or other planetary lives. So it could be a lot of things or in between lives when before we're ready to incarnate in this reality. We also learn about spirit releasement because a lot of the things that happens in the dreams and nightmares and trance includes experiences with other beings, some of them not so benevolent, so that we know how to we have to know how to release them to the light, to where they belong, because some of them are not dead. They're just other forms of beings and spirit animals and so on. And some of them are spirit guides that are there to guide you through the journey. So this is a very advanced, intense technique. And what I'm going to give you in this course is going to be about recorded material from a live session, from a live course. So you're going to be able to explore some of the things that we're going to be talking about in the full DRT training. Now, remember, this is the first day that I'm giving you here. This is, and some, some of it has been edited for this course um, and to remove some of the participants that did not want to be in the video program um, because of licensure, licensure um, challenges. You know, when you have mental um mental health license or clinical social work licenses you don't want to be known to be studying some of these things so we had to remove um uh, uh, some participants from the video course so you're going to see that sometimes we go from one thing to the next and that's because we have to remove some of those uh, people from the video course so what you're going to have access to here is hours of complete um, introduction of what is going to be covered in the DRT course. And sometimes we go from very basic to very advanced really fast, depending on what's happening in the conversation, depending on what the students are bringing up. Um, but know that the DRT training course is going to be 72 hours. So it's going to be a very intensive program where you're going to be working not only on dreams, nightmare, and trans regression, but also age regression, wound regression, past life regression, spirit releasement, ET implants removal, and other things that were not necessarily that we didn't dive deeper into the introduction of those eight hours because of time constraints, obviously. But you will be able to see how deep we're going to go with this training so that you can decide if this is something that will benefit you. Um, some people did the training because they have kids that they have been experiencing a lot of nightmares. And a couple of the other participants that were listening to the video course without getting the certificate were doing it because they were going through initiations in occult practices and they really wanted to dive deeper into who are these spirit guides? Do, can I trust them? Are they there for my benefit? Do they have the best intention in mind? Are these energies that are showing up as ancestors really who they say they are? So in the program, you're going to go through the training to understand that and know how to interview these energies, whether it is for your own self-development or because you want to do this, this 
protocol with paying clients. So I'm going to leave it here for now. Enjoy. I really hope that you get the most out of this. And I look forward to hopefully meeting you in the next DRT training. Thank you so much. We are going to start with the basics. And to do the dream regression um, or the trans regression or nightmares for that matter, we have to know the basics. So we are going to start with the breakdown of what that looks like so that by the time that we get to the dream regression, that you understand what are we doing, why are we doing it, and what happens not only from the spiritual point of view, but also from the medical point of view, because sometimes what happens when I speak to a lot of different through the business coaching that I do, I speak to a lot of people that are doing um, alternative healing modalities and their confidence is not very good because they have no idea what they're doing. They, they have no idea really how these techniques are so powerful that really are transformational. So the confidence that we get is when we really know what we're doing and how we're doing it and why it matters and how we need to, sometimes I think I went through this for a long time that I wanted change to be done this like really quick. I wanted to be like the superhero. I saved you. And you know, that, that was my way that I thought that I was doing a really good job. And we're also going to see how sometimes that actually can be very disrupted to the client because they're not ready for that type of change that quick. So sometimes we do have to like little by little get them to the point where they get it um, so that we don't really create disruption in other parts of their life where, you know, if you see one of the sessions that I provided you that Ashley was very great, you know, like she was just graceful to give us access to that audio because in that audio, she goes through a dream regression to find out what was one of her spirit telling her. And it was no, it was nothing it, like completely different than what she really thought that it was happening. And it really changed the way that she saw these energies. And, you know, I, I think she was a little upset at the fact that that came out that way, that the way that it came out, because it really kind of ruptured the a perception of how she saw these spirit guides. So with this training, I know it sounds like, oh, it's just dream, but we can actually take down someone and they can go into depression if they are not, if we don't, if we're not careful with how we handle the session and let them get to their truth. And even that it can be extremely harsh because you go from believing one thing to now this shock and then what happens now? So it can be very disruptive to someone. They can go into depression. When I had information come from some of my spirit energies, I don't call them, I mean, you can call them whatever you want, but this energy came and said, you know, you're not, I was very deep into the occult back then and trying to get answers for very deep things and, and working with some of these energies and thinking, you know, like if we do this the right way, we don't have to go through whatever, right? Like I, I was just really deep into it. And one of these energies came and said, you're not getting it. You're not really paying attention. And that's when all of it shift for me. And I realized that to help people, I had to get them to get their own truth before I inject my version of my truth and also change the way that I saw the occult and the way I saw the spirit energies. So it really took me down for a few years. Like it really did take, it played a huge number on me because I believe I was so set on one thing that for me, that was my perception. So imagine taking somebody's glasses off and now you're left with what? So I'm saying all of this to say, we have to be very careful how and how we do what we do when it comes to the people that are trusting you with their healing journey. And also to know that some of these people 
if you're doing the practice session and you're not charging, you're going to get people that are not serious about doing this work. But if you are charging, they're going to be more serious. And if you charge more, they're going to be even more serious about what they need to do. So there will be different levels of the type of sessions that you get, the people and so on. Um, so that you also have to be aware of that. Like, okay, why are these people not taking it seriously? Like I can share with you all when I was learning the technique and I wanted to understand how to pull the spiritual with the therapeutic part, I was getting a lot of people that I was new to the technique, to the healing, to the therapeutic environment. So I was getting a lot of people that were not very serious about what they needed to do. So, but it was my opportunity to learn how to, inject one thing with the other and really become really good at it through the process of working also with people that were not ready to do their work so everything is a gift at the end of the day so if we see it like that we wouldn't have any challenges with whatever type of people we get as long as you know your boundaries because also through that process you will learn what is the type of client that I want and are these people really the type of people that I want to work with and going down that rabbit hole of, you know, with a group that I belong to, we are a group of professionals, uh, there are alternative healers. And some of them are past life regression uh, practitioners. And we do a lot of investigation with ETs and spirit releasement clients and the investigations are to understand what type of clients, what type of questions and, and techniques are in, put into the session that has the best results for the, these people that have um, energy attached to them or ETs. And what we found out throughout the years, throughout the, the not the years, the months that we've been doing this, it's been almost a year, is that regardless of the dark force energy or the lost soul or the eating plants, when the person is doing the healing work, a lot of those things naturally disappear. So we don't have to go crazy with, oh my God, I have a demon here or I have an ET here. Because when we work on the healing part, what the person needs to heal, some of those things naturally are going to fall off. Some of the things are more stronger so that you need to be aware of that so that you can know how to work through them. But we don't have to be afraid. And I'm saying all of that because at the end of the day, the, the technique, even with dreams, nightmare, and trans regression is to heal. So in order to do that, we need to understand what that looks like, right? Which is where we're going to start. I want to share my screen and see if you guys can see this. Can you guys see that? Yep. Okay. So this is important for us to be aware of because a lot of people, we are working with, when we're working with the dreams, we're going to be working with the unconscious and subconscious. And we are learning through, through doing this type of sessions that there is a lot that happens with our subconscious. Even when you are doing trances, we are in these parts. And sometimes your mental mind comes in and you're like analyzing before you're ready to analyze. And you lose the trance experience because you go back into the conscious mind. But with the trances, we, I'm going to go through a quick um, leisure to help you understand what happens with the trances when we are working with the unconscious and subconscious in medicine, whether it is medicine or, or a dream, which sometimes the dreams can be even more intense than a trans regression with psychedelics or medicine, is because you are really working from the parts of yourself that you have no access to most of the time that it has been kind of neglected. So you have memory, if you start thinking, okay, about childhood, how many things do I remember from childhood? And if you don't remember a lot of those things, there, there could be trauma there that is preventing you from having access to those things, right? Or the traumas that you experienced in childhood that had developmental 
um, imagine a block. It had a mental block, the mental developmental block that it cover the process of you growing. Uh, we know that our soul starts coming into the into the belly, but it doesn't finish until year seven. And this has been, you know, like this is medical. This is scientifically proven that the amount of awareness, consciousness doesn't really come in until age seven. So when you're, when, what we're doing is when we know that is that when we go through the womb regression, sometimes the soul is outside of the body of the little tiny little egg because it cannot anchor itself fully into that little fetus because it's not able to hold that much energy right so there is a piece of but the same thing happens when it has a lot of trauma so the soul the piece of the soul that is in the fetus in the little egg and then you know is is growing into the little fetus and so on might come out the piece that is supposed to be inside a piece of it fragments out depending on the trauma that the mother the parents the siblings even the environment is going through, especially the mother, because that's the bi- the biggest, deepest connection that we have. So f- even from the wound regression and before, before they, c- they didn't know that they could go back to the womb. And then they didn't know that they could go back to past lives. So when this is, fa- I mean, in the medical community, I think even in IFS, Jacqueline, which I know you're taking the class soon, they know now that they can go to past lives. But before it was a no-no. Before it was like, that doesn't exist. So we in the alternative healing community know some things that are not okay in the medical community. That doesn't mean that they're not okay because they eventually they, they will catch up is what I'm saying. So we don't have to really um, be worried about that. Most of the people that are going to come to you with dream regression, nightmares, and so on, is because they have gone through traditional therapy. And a lot of my clients are the same thing. This is not something that I can discuss with a traditional therapist because they have no idea what, what I'm talking about, or they will think I'm crazy and they will put me in a, you know, in the Looney Tune. So we know that the soul fragments, and I'm going to try to draw what that looks like because. Otherwise, I don't think I'm going to make sense. Um, See if you guys can see the whiteboard. Can you see that? So this is us here. We're having this experience here as Mary. Uh, I'm not sure why Natalie's there, but okay. So this is us here right now. But what we know, even when you do, and I'm going to keep saying this thing so that you can put two and two together. When you're doing trans regression, when you're doing psychedelics, which is basically sacred plant medicine, but in a medical, um, you know, like it extracted out from the plants. When you're doing dreams or having a nightmare or even having visions, or even if you're not aware and you're unconscious of what is going on, why is this happening? You will have experiences that are coming from other realities and are clashing with your reality here because for the soul, all of these experiences are happening at the same time. The soul, the soul is timeless. So all of these experiences, maybe you die because you were a witch. Maybe you die because you had cancer here. Maybe you die because you were being abused. Another one because you were, be- you know, like you were born and you die alone. Um, you had a family, you lost your family. All of these things are going to be affecting the person here somehow. It, be- it becomes like everything is happening at the same time. So this person is being in the dream state is going through many different experiences or in a trance to understand why do I have X, Y, Z symptom or challenge or block or why do I feel I cannot have X, Y, and Z? Why I cannot find a partner? Why I cannot get pregnant? Why I have this family? Why did I have to go through this? 
it's not only going to come from childhood, from this reality, but it's also going to come from other experiences, whether it is in past lives or in other realities, other planets. If you do quantum healing, you know that a lot of the times we can go through other planets to find out answers that are affecting you here now. So the same thing that happens in a sacred plant medicine journey happens when we're dreaming. And this is the soul fragmentation. So when, when we are talking about soul fragmentation, we're talking about the fact that the soul is timeless. Everything for the soul is happening all at the same time. How does it know what to bring to the forefront it's going to depend on your level of consciousness and also your spirit team are working with your spirit to determine, okay, we're ready for this right now. In spiritism, we, we know that there is a spirit guy working with our guardian angel, working with our spirit to say, okay, now they're ready for this. And that could be, you know, the feelings of abandonment, feeling of rejection, dealing with, everything that we couldn't deal with because we had to put it on home in order for us to have a life so that then we eventually we get ready to address it so when we talk about the fact that the soul is timeless what we're saying is for the that dimension where your soul is everything is happening at the same time for us here everything is happening in linear time but when you go through an out-of-body experience or a medicine experience or a dream and you have that lucid dream that felt so real, something start happening, you start believing that there is more to this reality. So when we talk about the soul fragmentation and the timelessness of the soul, this is very important because you have to, uh, how do I get out of this? Let's see, okay. So we have to know that for us right here, today is today, yesterday was yesterday, but for our soul, all of these things that are affecting us, that are deep, that are related to the mission that you came here to work on. So you're not gonna work on a million lives at the same time. Depending on the mission that you have, you're gonna have similar experiences in past lives. And that's how these councils, this is what we find out through, through studying what happens in between lives. In between lives, you go through a process that some people call it the council, the high council. And when you meet with your high, high council, you determine what is the mission for this life. And depending on that mission, you're gonna have very specific life past lives, other lives that are going to affect that experience here. Where are those traumas in past lives that are leak, let's say that it's like a leakage, that it leaks to here? Because for the soul in that moment, it couldn't handle everything that happened in that moment. And this happens for many different reasons. But again, if we go back to the de developmental traumas that we incur in this life, the same thing happens in past life. So if you had a father that was very abusive, it is the same thing that is happening in another life. You continue with that life, eventually you die, and you come into this life. But if the soul couldn't do the work for that past life, that means that it is your job now here to go through that life and work on that life to rescue the piece of your soul that is trapped in that experience which is why we do past life regression. We're rescuing the pieces of the soul that is in that experience. So when we do the age regression, the same thing happens. We're doing soul retrieval or when we go into the womb or when we go into in between lives. A lot of people back in the days, I think, um, I don't remember when Michael Newton um, um, started doing the life between life regression, but they only do a part of the process to get the information. With this technique, we're not just getting the information. We are actually understanding what happens that is affecting you from that experience here now. So for example, 
a client that had um as we'll, we'll call it a soulmate for easier uh, explanation it has a soulmate he doesn't want to let go of the soulmate it is here feeling like i cannot even be happy with my husband i love him but there is something within me that also let me feel like he's the one i feel like something is missing so we go through and she had to do that session three times the same experience in three different sessions because it was that convoluted for her she goes through the experience and realized that she left someone in the between life someone that didn't incarnate with her but they have been incarnating for many many different lifetimes together this time that masculine energy decides to stay and she comes and you know she comes she grows up she gets married but there is still a part of her that says i i just don't feel like i feel like something is missing and i love this man but i just feel like i'm missing something very important and i cannot give myself emotionally, mentally, physically, sexually to him because I feel like I'm cheating and I don't know who I'm cheating to. Like, it makes no sense. So through the process of the different sessions, she means this energy, the energy that they used to go always, either, you know, as brother, husband, whatever. It was always both to them together. And in that process, she had the experience of saying goodbye, grieving, saying goodbye to this energy, letting him know, you know, I love you, but I need to do this now and, and vice versa. Both of them do that. They have the opportunity to do that. Months later, she's like, I don't know what happened, but, you know, to me, that was nonsense. But eventually something happened because I'm finally happy with this man that is my husband and we've been married for 12 years. So it doesn't matter if we believe that this is real. It doesn't matter. The client has to do the job. The job of the subconscious, whatever is happening in the in the subconscious is real to that person. Whether it looks like cartoons or it looks like robots or it looks like aliens, it looks like demons, it looks like shadows, it looks like people, it doesn't matter. The subconscious, that's a reality. So we cannot say to a client, um, well, that looks like a cartoon, it cannot be real. Or you disbelieving that the work that they're doing because it's the spirit that is doing the work it's not the person sometimes the person says but i cry at home but it, it doesn't nothing happens when you are in a session and you're working with your subconscious and you're letting your spirit do the work magic happens so if we know that all we have to do is allow those parts whether it looks like our tunes or line stick figure sometimes and the person is like, this just looks like a stick fear that I'm creating. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> the soul, the spirit is the one that is doing the work. So we have to be very conscious of that, that. And sometimes the client also has to be reminded that it is the spirit, the soul that is doing this work. So it's not then, right? So for the soul, for whatever reason, it's creating a stick figure, right? Because perhaps it cannot put if it's a man and it's going to think, oh, this has to be my brother, right? It's not going to fit in sometimes for these people, especially if they're very mental or if they cannot allow themselves to uh, put two and two together. So regardless of what it is, we just go with what is coming up. We don't prevent that from happening. So in 21 Divisions and in Spiritism, we also know that anything that we do, it's going to take 21 days for us to... See if we pass that lesson. And this is important because also in the medical community, um, they believe that 29 days or something like that is what it takes for a new pattern to develop or something to be integrated. So when we have this idea in mind, we can know, we have to also train the clients to understand that after a we open up the session, we are going through many lifetimes. Sometimes people go 10,000 years ago, they go to Egypt, they go to Rome, they go to other planets. We don't know how long. I mean, sometimes the person becomes a rock and they go back to millions of years ago, right? The soul is doing the work that it needs, that it needs to do, right? So when these experiences are happening, 
the person also has to do their job to integrate that experience. And that means that it might take them time to, you have this energetic surgery, you have this surgery of the soul, and then you have to, just like a surgery, a real surgery, you have to allow time for the wound to heal, to close up and seal. It is the same thing that we're doing here. It said that we're doing it at the spiritual level. We're doing it at the spirit level, at the soul level. So in essence, when you think about it, we are all heavily fragmented. <laughs> and when we're all heavily fragmented, it's like it doesn't, there is no competition who's more fragmented. You know, like we, you know, I have a close family member that has schizophrenia. So I look at him and I see how smart and amazing and spiritually gifted and i'm like i i wish i had that type of schizophrenia because i mean i could be even more powerful as a healer <laughs> but it's like what are you talking about you're crazy <laughs> so it doesn't matter what it is we are we are fragmented because we have to do the job that the soul we have the consciousness now that the soul didn't have in that experience so that when we go to those lives, we are rescuing those pieces of our soul. So by definition, you're moving energy through your body, whether it is the, you know, like we have so many different light bodies part of our that are part of our auric field. So the more energy that you rescue, the more whole you're going to feel in this experience. So you're doing soul retrieval just like the shamans are except that you're ha guiding your client to do this and if you treat it the same way with the same sacredness in the same if you're able to feel the spirit of the person that you have in, in front of you you don't have to be perfect all you have to do is really show up and what i mean that you really show up is that you really are there without judgment, judgments, without your own agenda. And, and what I mean is the goal is not to prove to someone, especially if you're doing DRT, dream regression, to have someone believe something that you believe, because then we are going to put our own agenda. And our spirit knows when we're being played. So their spirit will know when we're being played. It's the same thing. So as long as we treat this with a lot of sacredness and we know that we're working spirit to spirit and it's no me from this, you know, meat to another body that is just a body, but that we're actually doing work at the sacred level, then we're going to have a different agenda of what it means to do that session. And the spirit normally doesn't have these type of experiences in traditional therapy because they're not there yet. And I'm sure they will get soon there because, you know, we're moving towards that direction. In the meantime, people like us, we have to help our clients get to the point where they can open up and share things that normally they wouldn't share with anyone else. And some of these things can be very dark because in the dreams, we go through a process where we can actually start working through repressed emotions that normally we cannot work through when we are awake. So the dreams can become very spiritual as well as very in this reality where you're getting hit with things that are important for this life, things that you haven't addressed and that you need to address now. So another thing is that the fragments is not just in past life or in the wound or in childhood. It can be us as adult. When we have a surgery, the anesthesia puts us down, right? A piece of your soul, believe it or not, is hanging out, looking at what's going on. And sometimes it cannot come back in because something else came in. So whether we have accidents, um, you know, anesthesia, even if it's during birth or after, or if you have like a leg, um, you know, surgery or eye surgery or whatever, where you were put down, that means that you are going to have a fragment of your energy 
that perhaps stay in that experience. And that's how we find a lot of spirit attachments because the person might have had a surgery and they might say, you know, I had this surgery and then after this, this happened, or they might not even mention the surgery, but you, through the process of the interview, you have to know what questions to ask, right? So the person might say, I had this surgery and this happened and that happened. And then the next questions will be, okay, and did you ha- have you have any surgeries or have you been to funeral homes? If you work in hospitals, you know that you might be full of energies, attachments. And if you had a lot of trauma in childhood, you probably do have a lot of spirit attachments. And a lot of that also is the shadows that you created due to the trauma. So the faulty beliefs become shadows. Um, okay, let, let's stop here. Any questions so far? <laughs> I think if met you um, put 11, 11, I'm like, what are you talking about? It's 11, 14, I just saw that. <laughs> Any questions you can? I, I have a question. Sure. Um, so, um... How do you, um, I mean, I'm sure we'll, we'll go over it at some point, but how do you shield yourself from that then? Like if you have to go to a funeral home or you have to have, go and have, a, and you know, have anesthesia. I mean, is it intention? Will intention work? <clears throat> Asking your soul to protect you or shield yourself or energy work? Like how do you not allow that to happen? Like I'm, like right now, I feel like I'm never going to go to another funeral. <laughs> 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 It doesn't have to be like that, but we will go through an exercise. Um, You know, I'm not very, I'm I'm not very fond of crazy protection because that I'm also telling my spirit that we're weak and I don't like that. But there is an exercise, just remind me later, we'll do this maybe towards the end of the class today, just so I I don't get distracted with, because this can take a few minutes to do this. And I'll show you how to do it. It's a very powerful exercise. And just remind me because I might forget. But the thing is that if we're always feeling like we have to protect ourselves, we're also letting our spirit know that we're weak and that we're powerless. So we have to work on that too. Because once you work through your healing process and once you're going through that process of understanding how energy works, which normally happens a lot through the work that you do in the healing sessions is knowing um, that all of those fragments are punctures in your auric field. So you have your auric field and just like we have the fragments, right? Everywhere. These are holes where your energy is coming out of. So when you have an accident or an illness or you broke a bone, right? Like it's not like you had an accident, like life or death. It, it can be something so small as something breaking in your body or spiritually when you're dreaming, it's gonna create a hole in your auric field. So that is vulnerable and we have to seal it. So when you start seeing a lot of clients, if you do have that issue where you feel like you have to, then we'll do this exercise so that you could do that at the end of the day, every day. And also you can visualize yourself putting a net of light around your auric field when you go to these places so that you don't feel like you're opening up. But sometimes I used to say, oh, no, not today, sister. We're not doing that today because it'll be like, let me go help some. No, we're not doing that today, right? So we also have to know how to speak to our spirit and put boundaries with our spirit. Sharain? Um, my question was about <clears throat> the in the beginning when you first started explaining uh the soul and how it comes in from ages two to seven, I believe you said. No, from the moment that your parents decided to have a baby, the soul is already assigned to that body. So a little tiny spark, we are all energy. We have Mill- billions, trillions of little tiny pieces of sparks that composes this body. So a little tiny spark goes into the experience and start seeing. I have clients where they will go in and start seeing what their parents were doing before they had their first date. Oh my God, look at them. They look so happy. But how did they become monsters after? 
<laughs> so, so it starts from the moment that your parents that your parents were assigned that you had a that agreement that those were going to be your parents that experience is that you there is no egg there is nothing it's just the knowingness that, which is why when we go through sessions where the person goes through an abortion, we'll have a protocol for that because even then there is already, even if it's two weeks or three weeks or two months, it's already assigned. So there is a soul, a spirit that is already assigned to that, to that little tiny body or the potential of that body. And yes, that was a pendulum, Natalie. So up to seven years is when the brain is fully developed then you know that you have but the thing is that we don't because we have so much trauma the parents start telling us what we cannot do the teachers might tell us that we're stupid the neighbors might not want us so we have all this trauma that is interrupting the process so that even though if we're seven years old we don't have a hundred percent of our capacity because in every time that you have an experience that is deep for you that is an abuse on on who you are because your true essence is so bright and so beautiful and so perfect so that all of these things affect that belief of who you are your true essence right your soul your spirit then you believe those things you create fault beliefs of who you are which interrupts also how much energy you have and is also linked directly to a past life. So every time that you experience a traumatic experience in childhood or as an adult, you're going to wake up a past life, which is why some past lives don't come until you go through an experience that activates it. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Yvette? Um, so, so when you're working with someone or working with yourself with something that's coming up, does it matter where it's coming from? Like, I know for myself, I've had, I had a lot of early childhood trauma, um, before the age of seven. So sometimes I don't know if what I'm working through is from this life or a past life or so does it. Does it matter? Do you need to know that? Or will it just go with what, like trusting the soul to do its work? We, we, we trust the soul to do the work. A lot of the time, the person, I'll try to take the person to childhood and they will jump to a past life. Either the person couldn't handle childhood or the soul decided, you know, we're going to go to a past life because that's more severe in order for them to have the energy to work in childhood. So it's about the soul. If I believe that there is something, if we have time, there is something that it still feels like it's a little, mm, let's, let's go back to childhood. Sometimes I do that. But sometimes a person, it's almost like the soul knows. We, the, this sister is not going to be able to handle this today. We're going to go to childhood, do that. And then hopefully they have more energy and we're going to go back to childhood later. Because when you go to past life, you're rescuing energy that is going to, your body is going to move in a certain way. The new energy is going to be able to come in so that you have more vitality within you to do what you couldn't do before if you were very low and weak, you know? Yeah, because I de I've definitely learned through this process that any part you heal of yourself, whether it be past life or this life, actually heals all of your lives right and and you will be benefiting every part because it's it's all about our the ultimate journey is to align with your soul your higher self and get rid of yeah. all of the garbage that has been brought in whether it's this life or a past life or wherever it is um so I think you answered my question about just go with whatever's showing up and whatever, like listening to the that voice and not your head. Cause I have a hard time a lot of time. And you know this that I I bring my I bring my brain into the session and have and will take myself out if I'm in my heart session or in my heart, I'll like I'll take myself out and and I can I can feel the change in in myself when I do it and I bring my heart and I bring my head into it. Um so. I guess in that, like how, how do you balance that when you have all of these past lives showing up and you're, you're like, your brain is getting in the way of it. Or like well, you will pick the one that's, that's most intense. 
you, you I mean, but your client might say, I, ha I see three pictures. I see three, whatever. Pick the one that means that means the most to you right now or the one that feels most intense or the one that feels like is the right one to work on. You let the client pick because if you pick for them, you might just be wasting time or creating a potential challenge because maybe they really didn't want to do that job. So now they're, you're wait, I mean, you're just wasting time if, if you pick for them. They have to be the one to pick. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can help them guide by giving them the education of, you know, feel which one is the most appropriate for this moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. MJ? I have a question. So, so for the, for past life regression and wound healing, it goes really hand in hand because from, you know, what I'm learning from you, it sounds like that there's no way getting around it. Like there's really probably no such thing as the perfect wound, right? Something has, was bound to have happened in there. So, um, does it always go hand in hand anytime that, you know, in the future, if we're working with clients that we want to introduce wound uh, healing in order for them to really understand, hmm. for us to really understand what happened? Yeah, that's a good question because sometimes the, the client, I had a client just last week from Spain and the guy's like, my, you know, somehow he ended up in the wound, but he said everything was perfect. And everything was absolutely perfect. There was no problem. So I'm like, why did he end up in the womb? Which is, you know, normally when you are in a healing session, your spirit is like, we're going to take advantage of this and we're going to do the work. So <laughs> it normally doesn't go to a very good experience unless the session is to really get the person to feel the strength that they need to go to a severe experience later in that session or in different healing sessions, right? So I'm like, okay, let's continue. And he's continuing. And eventually he goes to two years old and he sees the change. He is perfect. Everything's perfect. His mother loves him. His father loves him. But his, his mother thought he was going to be a girl. But everything was fine according to him. He was in denial. Um, <clears throat> he's very feminine energy. Like he's an older man. But very, like, he has that feminine energy. He's no gay. And he goes, wow, after the session is over and he goes through the experience and he sees at two years old how a shadow was coming over him and that shadow was polluting his light and his, in his um, vitality. Like, he, he, was, he said that he felt like a shadow, like a curtain of a shadow coming into his mind. And then he's not pure anymore around two years old um anyways at the end of the session he says i wonder if that's why i feel so feminine because i wanted to be so good for my mother and my parents that i always felt like i had to like be who they wanted me to be and his mother in the womb was saying oh it would be so nice i can put that little dress and it sounds so crazy, but I mean, this guy is almost 60 years old or 60 something years old. And for him to realize that now, we'll see how that changes, if at all, right? But it was interesting that he had that, I didn't ask him, you know, it was just something that came up naturally. And we'll see, because normally we, from the womb regression, we tend to we tend to experience the womb, especially if the person is very mental, so that then we can take them to past lives. If if there is something that they, let's say, you know, you have, um, I had a client, she had Lyme disease. The Lyme disease came out of nowhere. Um, she saw a lot of different doctors, alternative, um, what do you call those people? Um, neuro something. And she was doing a lot of different uh, medical related um, healings and stuff like that. So she found me to see if there was anything in past lives that may have been affecting her. And she goes through a few lives where exactly the same symptoms that she was experiencing here, she was experiencing in those lives. From the head tremors, the hands, the, the, her, her mouth coming open 
uncontrollably. Like she had extreme Lyme disease. Months later, she had no evidence of the Lyme disease. Like the doctors couldn't believe it. And it was all because of the past life that she did. Like she's 100% confident that if she didn't go through those past lives where she was being beaten on the head, the hands, you know, and even the leg, her leg will like move like this all the time when she will get a little anxious. And she went through past lives where there was so much trauma to those areas that she, she just didn't believe it. Like the doctors didn't believe that it was possible either because, you know, it's like, how did you even do this? This is not possible. But the past life symptoms are directly correlated to whatever is happening here now. So I don't know if that answered your question because I forgot what was your question, MJ. Yeah, it answered my question because when you brought up the point that the mom was saying that she wanted a little girl, that makes me think of, even though it sounds like it's so harmless, that the feelings associated with really wanting a girl can make uh, the baby feel like they're not wanted, right? And if the mom was carrying uh, that weight of disappointment, ah, oh, it's a boy, you know, and stuff like it seems so harmless, right? Like, you know, but it's actually doing uh yeah. damage on an energetic level so it did answer my question yeah the it, the womb is a can be very very good to do if the person especially if it's adopted people that come to the session and they don't like you know i don't even know my parents why did they give me up you can find those answers there or i had clients where one of them was a stolen child, like her mother, her physical mother stole her from her biological mother at the hospital in Uruguay. And she realized through that one regression that what she was feeling, she did she didn't believe it. But she was like, I can this makes sense now because before I couldn't believe that I just did, never felt connected to this woman. Like I just felt like something was off, but she saw the woman take her from where they put her because the other mother was so sick that they had to take her to another room. And uh, I don't know, something was happening with, with a lot of blood and stuff like that. And she sees how this woman saw her and took her away from the hospital. And all of that happened in, in a womb regression. So the womb can give us a lot of answers about my own womb regression, when I had one down for me, it was about having a lot of doubts, a lot of, my mother was having a lot of financial um, questions, you know, she was very young, so I guess she was having a lot of fears of like, oh my God, now I'm going to have a child, and I've been dealing with financial doubts all my all my life, I mean, there's they're still there, but it's better now than before. So it's a process. It's not that it's one session is only going to do so much. And as long as we're alive, we're going to have things to do for this life. So we're not going to promise anyone that we're going to make their life better, like forever, right? Because we can only do so much. Some people do therapy for five, 10, 20 years, right? With this type of therapy, we, what is his name of um, this doctor? Um, Dr. Um, Norm Will um, Ely, I think, Healy. I don't know if you if you know him, Jacqueline, but he swears, and they have done so much research, and they swear by the fact that one past life regression is equivalent to 18 sessions in traditional therapy. So you're doing, you know, one session equivalent to, let's say it's even 10 sessions right? That you're speeding so much. And that's why the sessions, after the sessions, people normally have so much, they're tired or they feel like, oh my God, my life is over. And then three days later, like, oh, that's weird. It started to feel good. And then eventually they're like, oh my God, you know, this, I don't have this problem anymore or it feels better, right? So you're doing so much in such a short time. And if you follow the steps, you're going to do 10 times more than that. So you really, you're doing work that is uh, at, at the spiritual level for sure. Yeah. Okay, so we'll continue from here. So I think the main part of this, this introduction is to convey the fragmentation of the soul and 
the traumatic events that happen in childhood are in added layer to the past life. But when we also work on childhood, another way to see that is that when you work on the childhood traumas, if you face it at that moment, you might not have to go to a past life. If, if the client feels complete, is what I'm saying, you're not going to open up another wound by taking them even further. It depends on what's going on with the client. If it's something that has been happening for a long time, most likely you're going to have to go to past lives. But if it's something that is very um, specific and you find that in childhood, it's not your job to go searching all over the place to go hunting, right? We, we go to the origin. The instruction to the spirit is to go to the origin. Sometimes the person goes to childhood and if they come back for more sessions and they still have the same challenge, most likely it's because the answers are going to be in past life. But what I'm saying is we're not going to go haunting like we have to prove that this person had 10 lives that are affecting them or anything like that. We have to let it come naturally, right? Like we we, we don't want to be like, um, or when you think somebody has a spirit attachment and they're not ready for that, you cannot go haunting like you're the haunting, the ghost hunter because you can really do a lot of damage to the person, especially if the person is not ready to, to do those type of sessions that can really shift your perception of reality. So if somebody is having nightmares and there are very clear things that are indicating to you that they have a spirit attachment, you have to really work very, like you, you kind of have to like fill it out before you jump in because you, you can create a lot of disruptions there with you know, like we're all so unique and you don't know where the person is at if you don't have a really good relationship with them yet. I'm lucky because most of my clients see me for multiple sessions. So we develop a really good rapport and they trust me to know, right? And sometimes when I had clients that I would jump in, um, they, they will completely out of it later it's like it doesn't help that I took the energy out because now they're so afraid that they're going to invite another energy so I had to learn to back off which is really hard for me because it's like <laughs> well Yvette knows <laughs> so... <laughs> I, <did. laughs> I think I left her crazy that day <laughs> she, she went home for the weekend and she's like I'm going crazy <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so then she had to do rapé and a lot of other stuff to remove a lot of those. I mean, it, it is complicated, especially if the person has a lot of energy attached to them. You work on the ones, the ones that are showing up, they're ready to go. You just got to convince them a little bit. Sometimes they put up a show like, oh, I'm not going nowhere because I am the master. And they're just showing up because they're ready to go. They don't be fooled by them because they know that you can help them. I had clients that showed up that I have no idea who they are. And they're like, I don't know why I'm here, but somehow I found you. And immediately the energy will come out. Like I'm here, I'm the devil. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> we, we, we have to be conscious of that. So <laughs> it's just funny. Anyway, so I'm going to show you this. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. This is, so everybody can understand the auric. You guys can see that? Yeah, okay. So we all know that we have different levels to the auric field. This is very important, especially when you're doing dream regression or nightmares, because you have to know where they at. I mean, you don't have to know, but it would be good for you to know where they at when they're having these dreams. And a lot of people will know, oh, okay, I have my aura and, and that's my astral body. They, they, they just think the aura is the astral body and that's saying that I just go to the astral plane. But when you're dreaming, you can go to any of the planes of existence to the left or to the right plane of existence. And the left ones, I call them the left planes because you go 
to the left planes in the astral plane, and you're going to really experience a lot of nightmares. You're going to experience a lot of disturbances. If you have spiritual power, you're going to be picking up the dreams from even your neighbors or even people across the country that are resonating at the same frequency where you are. And it's going to amplify that. So, for example, if you're being um, if you're being attacked by a demonic energy in your dreams, um, that normally is going to mean that you have a lot of fears that you know things are moving within you, or if you are going through, a lot of us are going through training to know how to. Um, know how to work with these energies or we still have fears that we need to work through in order for us to know how to be afraid of these energies and that could be true for all of us right so when we know that we also know that when we look at the dreams whether it is our dream or somebody else's dream we know that the dreams are teaching us something about us all the dreams come back to us Regardless, like let's say when I have dreams, like so and so is gonna die. Well, what do I feel when so and so? What is my issue with that? Because I do have a lot of issues when I have those dreams. And my issue is I don't want them to die. I feel bad. I cannot do shit because I can only see that they're gonna die. And what am I supposed to do? And that that can be very disturbing. So. At the end of the day, I want all of us to know everything comes back to us. So in that dream that you're experiencing is teaching you either something mystical, something like magical, right? It's going through activations you, or you're working through repressed emotions and all of those things come back to us. So regardless of, you know, I had a dream, um, so-and-so is going to die. And what do you feel about that? Because that's where the the challenge, the trauma for the person is that we need to help them with. If the per, if the if the person, there is also another way to do that, where it is to teach them, get them to the point where they know if it's tr- the message is a true energy, a prophetic en- um, dream, or is it a trickster spirit trying to play with them? Because that happens a lot of the time, where the person is having drink this type of dreams and it's just trickster energy to play with them so that they can be in fear so and knowing how to for your own development i'm talking to you as a as as for your own development not for your clients when you're going through this spiritual awakening journaling your dreams and if you have those type of um, prophetic dreams you need to write them down and see if they really came true or how did they came true and how long it took you. Because when you're going through those dreams in the future, you'll know in that moment, oh no, this is not happening. Who are you? Show yourself. And you can become really good at really knowing what's happening and why it's happening instead of just assuming everything that happens in the dream is true and I have these dreams and they're true because a lot of those dreams can also be trickster energy playing games with you. Um, So soul retrieval, what we do in dream regression, past life regression, age regression, wound regression, basically we are doing soul retrieval. You know, the shamans, the medicine women, they really believe that when when you're doing work with a shaman, the shaman or the medicine person is going to do the soul retrieval for you. In this type of training, you're doing your own soul retrieval. We are just guiding you to know how to do it. Right. So the shaman is picking up the pieces related to the problem that you brought them. They're not going to pick up a million pieces for you, by the way. If something happened and you got sick and this happened and this happened and they, they're doing the soul retrieval, they're going specifically to that where you left that soul. And we do the same thing because when you you have your client show up. We are interviewing the client to know what's happening, right? You know, I feel really anxious all the time, blah, 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 blah. blah. And you go to the first time of the anxiety and before that and before that. And so you're looking also for the same link to get to the root of that experience. Making sure that I am explaining myself properly. You have a client that showed up with um, depression. Depression 
you know, depression is repressing emotion. So what is the emotion that needs to be worked on? And through the process of the interview, you're going to find that out. So once you have that core emotion, you follow that emotion back, 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 back. And sometimes you have to do that for 10, 20 different sessions, depending on how severe the, the, the depression is, right? So we're basically guiding the client to go from here to here, here, here. The shaman is going to go and pick up one. And I have clients that come and do 30, 40, 50 ceremonies and they go to Peru, they spend a month and they still have the same issue and they might be doing integration with me or something like that. And when we're doing the sessions, they're like, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming because in the medicine realm, you get in the cheat sheets to know what to do when you go to therapy work. A lot of people don't do the integration past the ceremonies because they think that was it. But once you really take start taking that seriously, you are taking that ceremony experience and doing a session to go with that ceremony or integration to go with that ceremony. And you're going to get 10 times more out of every ceremony because you're really seeing what you couldn't see before. Because in ceremony, just like in the dream, sometimes you see black and like just black and specific thing, like, like, a, like if you're seeing through, you know what I'm talking about? Like if you're seeing through a lens or something, you're doing this. But when you're doing, doing the therapy, you're going to be able to span that view of what that means for you. And that's what we're going to do here. So when, whenever we do medicine or even in the dreams, we're going to have a lot of the shadow pieces come up. I'm not talking about entity attachments in this case. I'm talking about shadow experiences. You create a specific belief based on what happened to you in that moment of the trauma. That belief becomes a shadow. So, but not only that, if you if it was intense, the shadow that created not only is amplified by potentially an entity attachment because your piece of a fragment of your soul came out and you didn't go back in because he says, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be in this family. This sucks. So now you have this empty hole with a faulty belief and something attached to that. So that's why sometimes working on releasing the entity attachments makes it easy for you to work on the healing of the inner child because now you don't have all of that extra shadow, extra debris blocking you from doing the work that you need to do. So the shadow work becomes very important. So the shadow is not necessarily an entity. It's an energy of the belief that you created. I'm turn black from here up. And I'm like, okay, this is just crazy. We were doing a lot of shadow work. The energy was completely black. And I'm talking about the color black. The color came back hours later after she puked so much. All of that energy of the mom, she believed that it was a good thing that she could mask herself and be okay with different surroundings and different people. But she was blocking her true self her true identity, her true essence. And at her soul level, there were masks that were being taken out, taken out, puking out all those masks. And you, it was beautiful. It was painful and beautiful at the same time. So we have all of these, all of us, we have all of these shadows that are part of our faulty beliefs. The, the things that we believe in the moment in order to survive or to continue to be okay or to depart the situation because it's too painful. What, for whatever reason it is, we we know that we have these shadows and then we, a lot of us will also find the energy attachments. If the person has a lot of trauma, most likely they're also gonna have the energy attachments. And later on, we're also gonna see that if the person has a lot of traumas, they can also be compromised with ET attachments, which I don't even wanna say yet because I don't wanna freak you out, but. <laughs> don't be afraid it's okay <laughs> so the once we work on the shadow we help the client come out of that experience and make a new belief 
that is in alignment with who they want to be. So there are different steps to do this and it's very easy. I just want everybody to be on the same page here so that, you know, we know what we're doing. So going back to the dreams, we want to also understand the pineal gland. So when we understand the pineal gland, we're going to, everybody knows what the pineal gland is, right? So we, let's call it the third eye if it's easier. So when we're talking about the pineal gland in the medical community, it's still a mystical gland. There is some research coming out now, but, or, you know, not now, but recently, but it's still very mystical in the medical community. Like, what is this? What does it do? And we, we know that when we are doing DMT, when we're doing medicine, psychedelics, or anything like that, the gland gets really activated and magical things happen which is the same thing that we see with, trying to share the screen here with this. So we are in this reality and we tend to see things from this reality. There is nothing else there, but all the other dimensions, all the other realms are really here, part of us now. And when we shift our perception, our lenses, our perception, we have access to, other realities that we don't have access to unless we're pretty consciously aware and awakened. When you dream and you're going through awakening, you tap into those realms a lot of the time, which is why a lot of people have these awesome dreams and they're like, oh my God. And sometimes you have those dreams and you don't want to wake up because it's like, this is the real thing. I mean, I'm living in a dream in that reality. And it really becomes so amazing that it can also create a lot of dissociation because it's easier to get pulled into that beautiful reality if you go to the higher planes where everything is magical, everything, oh my God, and you don't want to be here. So that also creates a little bit of dissociation if, you, if you're not careful, which is why it's important for us to do the work um, for our own development to do the work and know that we still have to be in this reality because sometimes it does get really easy for us to just want to always be meditating and become addicted to, I became addicted to meditate medicate um mediation because sometimes I was meditating for three four hours a day before going to bed because I wanted to experience what I felt like and I became really good at meditating because I had dissociation issues so it was so easy for me to dissociate and go into that reality very very quickly so it's a good thing but it can also be dangerous so the pineal gland when we're dreaming we know that this energy this pineal gland is activated st stimulated by light so when we have this stimulation by light it can activate it or repress it so when we are getting that pineal gland activated we also have the cfs fluid the fluid with the combination of the pineal gland can take you into a trance in your dream state. So when you go from a dream to a trance, your pineal gland becomes extremely activated so that you can experience the other levels of your consciousness, which is your auric field. And when you experience those levels of your consciousness, you are also activating DNA codes within you. So part of the work that we do with the dream regression is to know, to help the client understand what are the codes that they're activating because the pineal gland is sending information to the rest of the body through the energy because everything is electromagnetic. So you're sending information to the rest of the body and it's letting the DNA know this is how you need to read the DNA now. It's, it's magical. It's it really is beautiful. If you if you want to go on YouTube this week and look up uh, what's his name, Maro Zap Zapatera, he is a doctor that has done a lot of work on the pineal gland. And what they realize is that the pineal gland is the I am present. So when you have um, the the crystal fluid is the I am present. So the pineal gland sits in uh, the soul sits in the pineal gland. 
So the CFS fluid is traveling and it goes through the root all the way up to the brain and it travels in the brain, goes back down and it does that three, four times a day. So you have naturally the ability to create DMT in your body at the when you're doing the right things at the right time. And the DMT basically is a lot of energy moving so that then you can go into a trance. So if the CSF CFS fluids go three, four times and you naturally can create DMT, when you are going through spiritual awakening and you're dreaming, you can go into a trance. And those trance experiences, sometimes people will think that is an outside energy coming in to disturb them, whether it is an energy like a demon or something like that, or a ghost, or even ET. Sometimes people think, I saw this light and it has to be an ET or something like that. And it doesn't have to be because it depends on what's happening at that moment. When the CFS flu is going through, you can, if you're really attuned with your body, you're going to be able to hear the fluid. I don't, has anyone here heard your fluid, your CFS, CFS fluid going through your brain? Nobody? You can feel that. You can hear that when you start paying attention to it. And when you hear that, new neurons are being formed in your brain the damaged neurons that were damaged due to the trauma in childhood and so on teenage years are being rebuilt so it becomes very electrical like an electrical storm up there and it's like and you're going into major especially if this happens when you're in a very deep round cycle so you are having many different things that are taking you into a trance and when you get pulled out from the trance because you get afraid because of your natural fears, you're going to think, oh, I, I was being attacked because I couldn't move. And you, your body goes into paralysis. Some people think it had to be something that was trying to attack me because I got so afraid and I couldn't move, right? So they, they're thinking if I, could, if I couldn't have access to my body, it's because something was outside of me was attacking me, but it is your own fears most of the time that are attacking you in that experience because you're pulling yourself too fast and your body's not ready to respond yet. So you, you know, you, you're left without, you're left being conscious, but you, you don't have access to your muscles and stuff like that. So it becomes very interesting because you hear online that a lot of people are talking about, like, if you see lights in your room, if you, you know, like if you see DNA codes or the matrix code, that means like you were taken by ETs or something. It's not necessarily that is what I'm trying to say to you. So we have to um, just be conscious of that. So when you have those people that are coming for the sessions, you don't naturally go into hunting for the ET implants and the um, adoptions, you know. You know what I'm talking about. So. We have the left and the right brain hemisphere and the pineal gland is sitting right in the center. It doesn't have a double like the other, the other uh, parts of the body. And it is a trans, transducer. It is gonna take the energy from the body. When you feel that energy in the root chakra coming up, all of that is energy moving really fast. And it's moving, 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 moving. When it gets to the top of the brain and it sends that energy to the top of the brain, the pineal gland is going to send a signal like an antenna and you jump from this reality to the other realities. And it becomes really cool because you're expanding your filter of consciousness in that moment. You're no longer the same person that you were before you went to sleep when that happens. Something is happening within your body that is sending new information to your body. And our job is going to be to find out what that is, help the client understand better what that is. So, um, Depending on the filter of consciousness of the client, they might be able to tell you, oh my God, and I see this thing and I and I see how the neurons are doing this. And somebody else is just gonna say, there is a lot of things happening inside of me, and that's it. So you ask them to feel it too, right? You guide them deeper into the experience because they're gonna do what they can. They come back in a year later and they're gonna be able to tell you more that they couldn't tell you before because it's gonna depend on that filter of consciousness. So 
some people are going to have better a better ability to tell you this is what's happening to me some clients will be like well you know this is they're going into the experience and sometimes even when they're looking at the implants they can tell you the numbers of the implants somebody else is just going to tell you it's a green implant and that is okay we don't we don't need to know crazy details the healing is not in the details the healing is for them to understand enough that it can become clear to them what it is know that it has to be a whole book that they need to write about what happened in that session i hope that makes sense so this antenna this antenna is generating electrical discharge and with that when you're dreaming and if you really want to become good at it when you're in your REM sleep and your eyes are moving really fast around three, four in the morning and you know that that's the time for you, you meditate in a moment and you're going to go into full trance. So the key is not to be afraid of what could happen because a lot of us are going to be afraid of what could happen. Somebody could take me. <laughs> so. But if you become really good at jumping, you can go into trance almost every night. Three, four in the morning is the best time, even five, six in the morning, depending on, on you know, like you and, and your body. But normally when you're in REM, the deepest 90 minutes there, you're going to be able to take really good advantage of it. So just something to keep in mind. When we are working from the root up, we're working from, that's what a lot of people call the Kundalini. You're working from the root, sacral, solar, la, 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 and you get up. That's the Kundalini, right? But when you work from the pineal gland down, that's a full trance and that's the unified field. So you really bring in higher energy of consciousness to activate different energies within your body, whether it is, you know, something that's happening in the roots so that way that you can be conscious or more aware or maybe you start feeling like oh i really need to work on this is because those new calls are letting you know are letting you know i need to work on this and sometimes we have no idea that that's happening but it happens so that when we have those moments of the the pineal gland activation and that information is coming down to the rest of the body we're basically basically the dna is being read differently and if you guys know, um, they call it epigenetics. And it's a, a science that it shows that the, the genes are holding information from previous generation. So when we know that this is not even just in spirit, uh, spiritism and right anymore, like back in the days, it was like, oh, these people are crazy. They think that this can be passed down, but now they know. So scientifically proven that the genes are holding past traumas from previous generation. So what we're telling the DNA when we go into trans and we activate the pineal gland is, listen, you're going to read differently because you've been reading wrong the DNA codes. So when you're going through spiritual awakening, you're learning your DNA is learning to read differently the sequence of that DNA that is encoded there. Does that make sense? I am mean, confusing the crap out of everybody here. We're good? Okay, so... Just want to make sure that I... So when we, when we look at... Why this is important, though, is because we know that we are picking up so much information from past lives, from our ancestors, from childhood. And we're like, what the heck? Like, this is a lot, right? To, to really understand. And why do we do this? Why do, why do we keep repeating the same thing? Why, why can we not understand? And it's almost like one day you wake up and you realize, I really need help because something is wrong here, right? Which is eventually people find therapy and so on. So, but what I find interesting is that 
the brain is doing the, you know, like you, we have this brain, we have this little brain and the brain is doing its work. It's a masterpiece, right? But when we are neglected, when we go through something traumatic, different regions of the brain, they go offline. So it's not even like we want to, it's just that it happens. And it's, I mean, it can be very disturbing sometimes because you're like, where, well, how was I going to get better if I didn't, you know, and you're looking at someone and you might be saying to your sister, or your brother, or your partner, why can't you just get it? But there are pieces of their brain that are completely offline. So I think we have to know that when, when we have these people coming to our sessions, we're going to have people that are, that are very fragmented. Um, you know, they, they have pieces of the brain that are completely offline. But the beautiful thing is that research shows that when they go through the healing, those neurons that were fragment that were broken, let's call it broken, that they start healing themselves. So we know that this is possible. When the person starts healing, the neurons in the brain are going to start changing and doing things differently so that the, the parts that are offline can come back online. And that's why sometimes when you go through a session, whether it is psychedelics or sacred plant medicine, you might feel a lot of movement in your brain and you're like, something is wrong with my brain, Some, you know, and you just feel so much energy it's because something very important is happening. The, the medicine is going to do the same work that we do in therapy. And, and unfortunately, I have to admit it, it's going to do 20, 30, 40 times more than what we're doing in these type of sessions because the medicine takes you and makes you, especially if you do the San Pedro, you're going to feel it and you're going to believe it. And the neurons, because once you believe the neurons, they start healing themselves. If we don't believe, no matter how much sessions we do, we don't get much, right? Because the medicine pushes you to where normally you wouldn't push yourself. So when you're doing sacred plant medicine, you are forced to, some people fall asleep if they really are not ready for that. If their spirit is really not ready, they fall asleep, but some, you know, most of the people are going to be able to do the work that they wouldn't do otherwise. And they will gonna, they're going to get three, 40, 40 times more than what they will do in one therapy session. And this happened, this is scientifically proven. So the medical community is going crazy with psychedelic assisted therapy for many years now. It was taken, I think it was back in the seventies, but now they're doing a lot of work with psychedelics in psychotherapy to get the most out of both. And they have research showing that when the person does this type of sessions with psychedelics, you're getting, I mean, the improvement is, is crazy. So we cannot even compare. So the best will be a combination of both, but you know, some, some people are restricted by not being able to do the psychedelics for obvious reasons. And, you know, it is what it is, but I think eventually you know, we're going to get to the point where a lot of people are going to be able to have assets right now. If you want to do psychedelics in a traditional therapy environment, you're going to pay $10,000 for a session. So it's extremely expensive and, and forget it. Like if you want to do Iboga and do it in a traditional therapy, you, you're talking a lot of money for one ceremony of Iboga to, to work on, you know, even if it is mushroom or something like that. So we know that when we're doing these healing sessions, the neurons are going to read themselves differently. We're going to be able to have logical information coming through the brain, through the frontal, and it's going to help us make sense out of things that we couldn't before. And it is because of the different sessions that these people will be doing with you that is going to help them the repressed emotions and things that they couldn't deal with when they work with that in your sessions. And a lot of the time they're going to find those repressed emotions, especially in the dream, because it is through the dream state 
that the brain says, okay, some things go offline, some things come online, and then the repressed emotions come up, except that they're not going to look the way that we normally see them. So it's going to put a picture and an image to go along with that emotion. And sometimes it's going to project it into a third person. So you think, oh, that's not me. But we need to know that it always come back to us. So whether it is a projection or something that is happening that looks like a different life or, you know, stick figures or whatever it is, we always have to come back to ourselves because it's going to be always about ourselves. So when we when we are going through that experience and asking the client about the dreams or the nightmares or the trans experience, we're pay, we have to pay extra attention to the things that are not being said. And the reason why this is also important is because a lot of the people are trying to, they have repressed those emotions to survive. So, the, the emotions that are being repressed are not going to come out and be like, this is what happened to you when you were three. They're going to come out in a way that we are going to have to help the client make sense out of that by doing the sessions, right? So the fun sessions are going to be when it's something related to spiritual, like mystical and stuff like that. But in the dreams, we're going to find that it is the door to the unconscious. And in there, we're going to find the whole universe that the client isn't even aware of. So our job is to help them make sense of, of that universe. There was a, there was a, what, what is the name of this doctor? Um, oh my God, he's pretty popular. Um, he has a weird accent. Um, what is the name of that doctor? He was in one of the conferences that I took, he was talking about how they did a research and they found that out of 2000 people, out of 2000 people, they um, realize that when people are traumatized, only what they feel is real. And I found that to be interesting because we're talking about this technique is really about what is the person feeling even in the dream state, because that's going to give us the key to where they need to go, whether it is in this life or in another experience that they might not be comfortable with, but it starts with a dream. So I'm trying to remember the name of that guy. Bone something, Beso something. Um, so Vandercock. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, his accent is, is, is actually cool. But anyways, he was talking about um, how whatever they feel is the reality. That's, that's and the way that the hippocampus and everything else in the brain, the amygdala and everything is going to believe that reality so that we respond and act based on that reality, even if it's a faulty belief that we created due to a trauma in childhood. So, you know, what? When we know this, we can be very kind and patient with our families, ourselves, the other people around us, because we tend to be like, I think we can forget pretty much anyone, but when it comes to us, it's like, no, I cannot forget myself. And even in sessions, you're going to find that a lot of people can forget anyone, no matter what they did. But when it comes to them, it's like, what? I should have known better. I should, I should. But once we we really have an understanding of that, it's important for us to have some grace with us because we don't have any, you know. And another thing that they found is that when the person is being traumatized, there are some things that are happening when the with the brain. There is, there is this... The amygdala is very active. The flight, the flight, freeze, flight response is very active. So it, your brain is thinking, do I do I stay? Do I go? Do I fight? Or do right? Do I freeze? And when we think about that too, we can also be aware of what happens in the dream because in the dream state, a lot of the time, if you have a dream, you might be let's say you're learning to do magic and you're trying to 
you know, shoo energy and this and that with your hands. And then sometimes you cannot do that because whatever reason, like one mom, one day you can and another day you cannot. It's your soul letting you know there is a trauma here related to survival <laughs> that you need to be aware of. And the best way that he can teach you that is because you're so much into spiritualism now that you're trying to shoot energy and learn how to play with your energy field. And it's going back to what happened. Why are you still afraid? Why are you still in survival mode? So knowing to to be aware of these things, even in the dreams, is pretty interesting because, you know, when you're learning to go into the dream state and going through mystery school, you are going to have experiences that are pretty cool. But then sometimes you go through the same experience and you realize, oh, but I cannot move even the high or I cannot fly or why is this thing following me? That is a survival instance. So that initially, the initial response for us should be, tell me about your childhood, right? Was there any part in childhood when these things happen? Because obviously it's coming up for another for this reason now. So knowing what means what, even in the dream, is going to be crucial for us to know where, like how to guide the client to the origin of the issue. So and any questions so far before we continue? No? I have I have a question. Yeah. Um my question was in reference to when you were talking about um the pineal plan and um how our bodies have can create DMT naturally depending on what we do throughout the day. Is that what you said? The DMT, well, yeah, if, if you if you meditate a lot, you're going to be able to move the CFS more effectively. And the DMT naturally is going to... The thing with, with the pineal gland is that it can take you to an experience that is not pretty cool or it could be pretty amazing because your third eye you're still resonating at a specific frequency. If you're, if you are having a lot of fears, a lot of things that are, you know, like let's say you watch a movie and something about that triggers something with all the energies that are within you, including your spirit is listening when you watch TV, when you read a book, right? So whatever is very interesting to you during the day can take you to an experience in the dream state. So I don't know if you ever seen a movie and you're like, oh my God, that was so cool. And you go and dream and you have something similar. Anyone? Like, it happens to me all the time. Right. And the one time I was, um, I, I don't know what I was doing. And there was a show that I seen the, the thing on Netflix. And I heard a voice said, um, what was the name of the show? I don't remember. It was like something, Wind Saga or something like that. Like, what is there for me? Because... My, there was a voice within me letting me know there is something there that you need to pay attention to. So I went and watched the series, nothing happened. But then like a week later, I had a dream and it was pretty cool because I'm like, isn't this interesting? But it was just showing me things that I wouldn't normally be attracted to. And it was an energy, whether it was my spirit or something else, letting me know there is something there that you need to pay attention to. So I think sometimes we're going to have those experiences where you know, or even an energy that is with us or a spirit guy that is with us or an energy that wants to call our attention. I don't know if anybody had an experience where sometimes one of your spirit will be like, you need to take care of this, right? Like related to your health or something like that. And it's just an energy letting you know there is something here and you're not paying attention to. So that... Whatever happens in the daytime, and if it repeats in the dream, you you should know that there is a message because in the dream state, we go through a lot of metaphors. So also learning to get a client to understand the metaphor for the meaning, because it could be so many different things. You're not going to give it, you know, I think with the, the issue with some like um, Simon Freud and all of those people were that they were giving a definition of what it meant. We need to ask the client, what does it mean for you? Because it's about you and your truth. Yesenia? Um, so, okay. 
My mm -hmm. question was from before when you said that you had a ceremony with someone who had the black that was over over them and they had a, let a lot out and it was because they weren't being true to themselves essentially. And I guess this is something that me and Omar, we talk a lot about um, because it's a struggle because we, we're both, obviously we're all awakened. We know everything that's happening, the shift that's going on, how we are evolving and everything. But yet we're still so embedded in a 3D world, essentially. Um, so we're forced to play in a realm that I, that doesn't resonate with us. And, you know, having children, it's not like I can go into a, you know, in the mountains in, in Colorado and just live off the earth. <laughs> I would love to. And, I, you know, meditating four hours a day sounds awesome. But that's not my reality. So how do I... How do, how do we survive, essentially, when, it, you know, we're living still in, in that in-between stage and, you know, we're having to do baseball and basketball and competition where the parents are yelling at each other and I'm like, oh, that's so heavy. <laughs> and then, you know, when you rather, when you know that's not where we're headed towards. So it's a, a really... I know this is not necessarily about dreams, but when you said that black cloud, I'm like, oh my gosh, is that my future? <laughs> I'm not living. That's not, <laughs> you know, I'm not living what I would like to live in, at least not yet. So am I creating all of this stuck energy in my chakras continuously because I'm not being authentic to what I know or what I would like to be living into? Yeah. I, I, I mean, I like to think of it like how beautiful it is to see these humans like okay let me give you an example i used to go to baseball with my my son he started playing baseball when he was 10 or 11 i don't remember now but and i would see these kids playing i'll be like oh my god they look like little angels like i can actually see wings around there and i was like oh my god look how cute and then the parents would be like go go why didn't you and i'll still be like and look how crazy we look like we're you know what I mean like there is so much competition but at the same time is there is a beauty in that too though because mm -hmm. we're teaching them inner strength and different things that they need to experience for this reality right so somehow we decided to come and experience this life for whatever reason right mm -hmm. so why can we just enjoy it like it's okay to have competition right like competition drives evolution mm -hmm. It's been the, the history of this planet, like the animals from five, six hundred million years ago had to evolve and evolve and evolve. And it was always based on competition. So I, I don't see it as a bad thing, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, it's part of life. We can know. And I think that's when it becomes a little um, like an obsession. When we become obsessive, we do open the door for things that are not at very high frequency to become part of us because we become obsessed with something. But when we detach and we just enjoy and we live in a high frequency, there is no such thing as I have to put a mask. I'm just enjoying seeing these crazy people do that because it's fun. It, it can actually be fun. It's like looking at us up, right? Laughing the whole time or enjoying the fact that they are so asleep that they don't or maybe they are awake just like you but in that moment they have to be there for their child mm -hmm. it can be all of those things i don't see it i'm afraid of obsession when somebody becomes very obsessive with something or someone or an idea then that could be a problem because we we know that an obsession is actually a very low vibration thing to do right to become obsessed with something that means that we're very attached to an idea of what it means to be different in another way right so the opposite of whatever you want so i will be more concerned with becoming overly obsessed than just enjoying life it's just, it's more of me not being able to speak my truth a lot of the times because it, then are so fetched where it's like they're not I, even you know they're talking about you know having margaritas at 11 o'clock enjoying baseball and i'm like uh oh, i want kombucha and tea <laughs> i'm like oh let me just not say anything <laughs> well you can definitely find new friends if, if uh, i mean i think 
having a group of people that you resonate with and that you can count on to do the weekly checkups and hang out and you know go places and it becomes very crucial because a lot of the problems that people have when they're going through a spiritual awakening is that they feel so alone so the loneliness definitely is not a good thing right so finding a group of friends that have your back is key but at the same time being okay with you can have your drinking i can have my tea yeah well that's that's how it is yeah essentially okay i it's that in between where i'm um we're having we're having a yeah yeah but at least you have each other some people don't have yeah you know yeah that extra person to hang out with and talk about thank you yeah so let's see should we take a five minutes break i have one more question i'm sorry it was in reference to how you were saying um in the dream state um some of us like in the realm sleep um i guess you said you were between like three or four in the morning you said that if we um go into meditation and that moment that's the best way to go into trance is that something we have to wake up and then do or like how do we know (laughs) how do we know like if we're sleeping how do we know, like, okay, going to trance? Like, what is that? Is that a conscious thing or like? Yeah, you would have to happen? become a little conscious of that. If if you're not naturally doing that, then you'll have to do some, um, you'll have to have some discipline to do that. But if you want to advance in your spiritual journey, that there is no cheat cheat to that. Like you, meditation and knowing how to go into trance in your dream state to speed up your spiritual awakening is key so now i've had um over this past week actually since you know um since i have made the decision to be a part of this dream regression training my dreams have been amped up a lot but i've had last week two dreams where i went into trance in the dreams not something i consciously did but in the dreams well, you was in one, <laughs> you were in one and you came to me and I went into trance in the dream. And there was another um, person that came to me and then I, they were speaking to me and I instantly went into trance within the dream. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not something that I consciously did. It was just people coming to me within the dreams and me going into a trance state. So is does that count or is that different? No, that's the same thing. Um, so when we have spirit beings or your higher self, we have our inner self, but they're also, you know, in, in some healing modalities, we call it higher self because we know that that energy has even more light than what we have right here, right now. When you have a spirit being, especially if it's an ascended energy that is very high up there in the in the frequency range when they come in contact with us even if it's in the dream because they have so much energy that energy is going to activate your energy too so that it's going to take you really fast and it's it's going to happen whether you want it or not so it's a natural thing to experience okay thank you So let's take five minutes and then let's come back. Um, 